Hi everyone, today we're going to take a look at HDRFX Pro 2, which is one of the plugins available as part of the DxO's Nick Collection 5. And Nick Collection 5 also includes a full photo editor from DxO called Photolab 5. Now I'll actually be using Photolab 6, but I won't do anything in Photolab 6 that I, you can't do in Photolab 5, because sometimes I like to uh, massage the photos a little bit before and after I use the HDRFX. But uh, with all that said, let's get started. Now, for those of you not familiar with HDR, basically it's a way to capture more dynamic range in a scene than your camera would otherwise be capable of. And generally speaking, this is accomplished by taking three exposures. You take one normal exposure, like this first one here. Then you take another exposure, typically two stops underexposed. And then you take a third exposure, typically it's two stops overexposed. Uh, so this is known as uh, bracketing or exposure bracketing. Now a lot of cameras can do this automatically and some people like to do more than three bracketed exposures. They might do five bracketed exposures uh, for a little more granularity or to capture more dynamic range. But for today's example, I'll just be using a plus or minus two EV exposure bracketed sequence. All right, so I've selected my bracketing sequence here, these three images, and um, I'm just gonna go ahead, and these are RAWs, I'm just gonna go ahead and click on the Nick Collection button. And export settings, I always double check that I'm exporting as TIFF in 16-bit. And then I don't resize or do any of these uh, saturation things, but I do check all the EXIF data and stuff here. And we click OK. And then we can go into HDR Effects Pro 2. And you should notice that the images now have a little clock next to them, meaning it's going to process these into TIFF images and then open up in uh, HDR Effects Pro 2. So we'll skip to that part. All right, now the next thing that shows up is the HDR Effects Pro Preview dialog. And it is showing you the three bracketed images here, and it is automatically detected that this is a negative two, this is a zero, and this is a positive two. Now there are times when it doesn't correctly identify the exposure bracketing sequence, and I'll show you what to do in those cases. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead and work with this. Uh, we have our auto alignment dialog, and uh, I always click on this. Ghost reduction, uh, we don't need too much here. This is for reducing like if there's things moving in the uh, scene. Uh, but I always check this at 20% just to have a very minimal effect, uh, particularly with landscapes, it's not that a big deal, but in city scenes where you have people walking around and stuff, uh, you may want to increase the strength and you can experiment with these different percentages here. And we also have chromatic aberrations and I don't expect any in this scene, so I'm just gonna uncheck that. And then this slider here just kind of gives you a preview of the dynamic range of the scene. So I can slide it up and you can see the shadow areas. And then if I slide it down, we should be able to see the highlight areas, just to give you an idea of what the uh, scene is gonna be blended as. And again, I normally just ignore this. I don't normally you know, slide this. I just go ahead and cr uh, click on the Create HDR. Now it takes about 10 or 15 seconds to blend the images together and create this HDR image, where you have all of the highlights and the shadows brought in, and of course the midtones. Now. To me, this image looks a little flat, so from here, I can either use one of their presets that they've made over here, or I can manipulate the image directly using the sliders over here on the right. And uh, this first box here deals with the uh, HDI algorithm that it used to create this image. Uh, so we can increase the compression of the dynamic range, or we can reduce it so we have less dynamic range. Um, and then we have our usual suspects down in here, you know, highlights, shadows, exposure, saturation, temperature. We also have control points, uh, which I don't use much in this particular module. And then some finishing touches. We can add vignette, or we can uh, mess with the highlights only, etc. But what you use over here is totally subjective, whatever you like. Uh, but let's just uh, export a flat image back to our photo editor. So we just click on save here. Now, in HDR FX Pro 2, I, I never do this save and edit later. I do sometimes in the other modules, but not for HDR FX Pro. I just click on save. 
And then when it's done saving, it takes you back to your photo editor. And the workflow is very similar with Lightroom. It just takes you back into your thumbnails. And you'll see a new file here named nickhdr.tiff. And this is the HDR image created with Nick uh, HDR Effects Pro 2. And then from here, you can just do your normal editing. Add some contrast. Maybe add a little saturation. And then... Uh, I like to do just a wide crop, I think, would look good with this. A little bit tighter. Something like that. All right, let's do another one that's not so perfect. So I'm going to do this bracketed sequence here. So let's start with the first one. And I'm just going to pull the highlights in a little bit first. Maybe a lot. There, something like that. And then let's go to Lens Corrections and apply Lens Sharpness. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. Maybe pull the highlights in a bit and apply Lens Sharpness. Nothing, nothing drastic. We'll apply the Lens Sharpness and pull in the highlights. Okay, let's export these three images. So we're going to click on Nick Collection, double check my export settings, export as TIFF, say OK, and then we'll go into HDR Effects Pro. All right, so that took uh, nearly a full minute to bring into my HDR Effects Pro. And you can see we have a little warning here that says that the metadata of one or more images is different from the other images in the series, which may reduce image quality. And I get this time to time. Uh, for some reason, the HDR Effects Pro uh, wasn't able to read the EXIF data properly to see what the exposure difference was. And in this case, it picked up minus two zero and plus two and a third. And that's pretty close. I mean, close enough for this image. And uh, this is just a preview window, which I can ignore. And I'm just going to create HDR. All right, so only another 10 or 15 seconds to come into HDR Effects Pro 2. And uh, again, I can pick a preset or I can manipulate the image directly. Um, maybe some of these, let's see. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> that looks pretty good. But let's go ahead and use the default setting and edit in our photo editor. And the only thing I would change here is... I like a little bit flatter image, and I noticed that the highlights are still a little bit blown, but I can bring them in just a tiny bit this way, like so. And then I'm going to desaturate slightly, because again, I like, I like the image to be just a little bit flat when I bring it into my photo editor. And that looks good, and we'll click Save. All right, so it brought us back into our editor. We'll open up the HDR file. And uh, I'll just do some minor editing here. So I'm going to add some contrast back in. And uh, let's warm it up a tiny bit, like so. And I'm going to shift the reds just a tiny bit, yeah, right in here. And then uh, let me just do a square crop on this one. right about there bring it in a tiny bit now i wanted to show you one more quick example where when the exit data is not complete like in this case i used a uh, an adapted fisheye lens so i have no lens data or aperture data for nick collection to use and if i export these into nick collection you'll see that all three images have the explanation point or warning. And I have to manually enter the exposure bracketing sequence. And, and I know for a fact that I did plus or minus two EV. So I can either dial it in manually in the uh, individual settings here, or I can just use the EV spacing and say number two here, so it automatically fill the boxes in for me, plus or minus two. And then I just do create HDR as normal.
And this time, let's just use one of the presets. I, I do kind of like this uh, soft preset in the landscape. Uh, and we'll save that. And then I'll open it up here. And I actually have a preset for my fisheye lens. So I'm just going to uh, apply that like so. We'll export that one. Now I just want to kind of give you a couple other tips here where after you've created your HDR image, you can actually delete the three TIFF images that HDR effects Pro use to make the HDR image. You don't really need them anymore. However, if for some reason you didn't like, you know, the uh, foresty or soft uh, landscape effect that was applied and you want to try something else, what you can do is select the three TIFF images that were created previously, go to Nick Collection, and in Export Settings, instead of exporting as TIFF again, because then you'll get two TIFF files, you can just do Export Selected Images Without Processing and click OK. Then go into HDRFX Pro. So instead of taking, you know, a minute or two to pull out the images, it usually only takes about 15 to 30 seconds. And then I'll do my EV spacing, plus or minus two. And create HDR. And then everything's pretty much the same from here. Now, I actually use the HDRFX Pro a lot of my commercial real estate photography uh, because I found it actually does a much better job than the Lightroom and Photoshop version, uh, particularly with the little fine-tuning and tweaking you can do the algorithm and stuff before you actually export the image for editing. And uh, if you haven't tried the HDRFX Pro for yourself, I'll have the uh, my affiliate links down below, as well as if you found this video helpful, maybe consider buying me a coffee or making a small donation. But I appreciate you watching, and I hope to see you again soon.